Hello, everyone. Oh, you can't even see my thing. Hello, everybody. We are live discussing Thorn by Intisar Kanani. This is, I don't think it's the first in the series, or maybe it is. I'm not really sure. Um, I think it is. But yeah, it is. I think, yeah, I think it is too. Um, but this is the first in the series, um, and it is a retelling of the Goose Girl, and it came out sometime yeah. at, in April. Did it come out like the beginning of April? I think it was March ish, um, something. It's a recent release, <laughs> and well, we're here to talk to you guys, right? Yeah, it's a recent re-release. <laughs> um, yeah, and and we're here to talk talk to you guys about it. Um, so none of us have physical copies, which is which is why we have to do this due to everything <laughs> that's going on. But um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about it. Okay. Um, so our formatting is if you guys have never been here before. Our formatting is that we are going to do non-spoiler talk for the first 10 minutes or so where we talk about our general thoughts and our ratings. And then we will let you guys know we'll go into spoilers. And yeah. So who would like to start with their general overall thoughts? I'll start. Um, so in case anybody watching out there doesn't know, this is supposed to be a retelling of the Goose Girl. And personally, I went into this book. I have I never even heard of the Goose Girl. I did not know it was a thing. And so when I saw the reviews, they were like, oh, this is a nice retelling of the Goose Girl. I was like, okay. Um, so it's <laughs> supposedly, so it's about this girl who is not liked by her family. She's a princess of a very small kingdom and she is betrothed to the prince of this other very bigger kingdom and she goes there along the way she switches places with this mean girl like they switch bodies uh, and then things happen. But I went into this book and I wasn't sure what to expect. I was actually the one who suggested this book for as a book pick of the month. Um, just because it sounded good, it sounded interesting, and um, I, I learned along the way that it's a, it's actually a re-release. This was originally an indie book, um, and the author released it on her own, and then it got picked up by HarperCollins this year. And, and so it, I actually really, really enjoyed it. I did not read the original, the the first indie release of it. I did not read it um, according to the author. This book, um, when it got picked up by HarperCollins, it actually went through 16 rounds of edits. So I don't know how much different the original is from this version. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I liked the characters. I thought this, the story moved at a nice pace. I wasn't exactly thrilled by the ending. I thought the ending was a little anticlimactic. It, uh, honestly, the story kind of builds you up for this big confrontation. And I feel like the confrontation that we got just didn't live up to what I was expecting. Um, when I was reading this book, I was like, oh, this is going to be like one of those books that I'm just gonna love. It's gonna be one of my favorite books of the year. Um, it was like around the middle of the book, I was thinking maybe 4.55 stars and then the ending kind of disappointed me. So I did rate it four stars. Uh, I did really enjoy the story. I thought um, the main character was really relatable. I wasn't the biggest fan of the love interest. I thought he was a little, um, I thought he, We'll talk about it later, but I, I just didn't think he was that <laughs> interesting. And honestly, one of the things that he did that we find out later that he did was a little bit creepy and kind of like an invasion of privacy, in my own personal opinion. Um, but otherwise, I really enjoyed the story. Um, it was really fast paced to me. I actually read this really, really quickly. Um, so, yeah, I gave it four stars. Um, that's, I mean, go oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 you get ahead, you get ahead. I mean, Kat, I'm glad you finally, like, recommended something instead of just being like, I'll say okay to whatever you guys pick. <laughs> well, you guys were, like, recommending all these books, so I was like, I don't want to read this, so I'll just, like, look up something, and I was glad that all, both of you guys said yes, so I was like, okay. You were like, this sounds good, here. <laughs> anyway, um, so... Anybody that, I mean, you guys know, but anybody else that, that watches my channel knows that I'm not a big fantasy reader. I used to be, like, way at the beginning of BookTube, but I've kind of, like, evolved into more of, like, a contemporary person. So there's a lot of fantasy that just doesn't sound interesting to me, but this one did. So 
when we said yes and I started reading it, I also didn't know anything about the Goose Girl or what it was. So I did like a like a quick general internet search just to find out what it was so I knew as I continued to read. And honestly, I think that Wait, the hold beginning on. of this book... Can you tell me what the Goose Girl is, what you found? Because I, I didn't look it up, so... So the Goose Girl, it's it's very similar to the beginning of this book where it's like you have these two people and they like a sor- a sorceress comes and they change bodies basically um okay. that's that's the really rough version i would have to look it back up okay. um but um so I, I was enjoying it more at the beginning of the book uh than i was as it went on but i still enjoyed it overall and gave it three stars but the beginning had really caught my attention um and i think it's I think this is one of these books that has made me want it. It makes me want to keep reading her work. Like I definitely want to like keep this author on my radar and read more from her. Um, I kind of agree with you with the, with the anticlimactic ending. And I also have thoughts on the love interest as well. Um, But overall I thought it was good. Three stars from me. Um, and this is an author that I want to keep in mind. So I kind of had, I guess, an interesting experience with it. Cause when I first started it, I was like, uh, I don't like the writing. Um, it may just have been that it was like so different from whatever the hell the last thing I read was that it felt like there was this formality to the writing that also kind of seemed a little awkward in some places. Um, but, but you know, after a few chapters, I kind of got over it. And um, and I did look up the goose girl because I was like, what the F is a goose girl? <laughs> you know, like, what does that mean? Is that a metaphor for something? <laughs> so, so I looked that up. And, like, what's kind of weird is that the, you know, just based on the summary, the stories sound identical. So I'm wondering where the retelling deviates, you know, like where where the differences lie because... Um, it's, it, it felt like the descriptions were the same. The goose girl also has a horse named Falada. Was that, was that the horse's name? Yeah. Yeah. So like if the, if the horse was even named the same, and I think the horse's destiny was the same in both stories. Um, there's just a lot of similarities. So I am curious to see some kind of like list of what the differences were or, or where she deviated in her, um, retelling. But I think, I don't, I don't know if I would say, I definitely don't read a lot of high fantasy, but I enjoyed this. I think though it had the the feeling of just being this very tale, this fairy tale in, in the way that the main character was almost a little too perfect. Yeah. You know, like she was constantly doing the right thing. I don't feel like she had any real flaws. Like we knew from beginning to end that, she was going to do the right thing and that's why she was chosen and, and, and blah, blah, blah. So, um, but I did like it and I agree with you about the ending, but maybe that's because it's a series or do you think it's going to be a series? Like the second book isn't necessarily related in the same way. So Chloe said that the second book that she's writing within the series, a companion sequel, and it's going to follow the char- one of the characters from the short story at the end. Okay. Which I'm thinking I- it's the Fae with that girl that saved him from the short story, but I'm not sure. I'm, I gotta look it up. I don't know if that's gonna be like a direct book or not. Yeah, so um, I think on Goodreads, I remember, you know how there's that questionnaire where you can ask the author anything. Um, The author replied Mm -hmm. and it said that there was a, it was a companion sequel. It was not, there was not gonna be a direct sequel because somebody asked if it was a standalone. Um, She does have on Goodreads listed, like there's a couple of different things listed for the future. Like um, the, the companion one is, is Brambles. But then there's also some, but uh, there's also something listed for uh, 2021. That's a, it's a completely different series, and it's called The Theft of Sunlight. But I don't know if that's the same, if that follows. Okay, yeah. So I messed up. So The Theft of Sunlight is the companion who features the main character from the short story. But I don't know what Brambles is. 
oh, Brambles is the is a prequel short story to Thorn. That's what it was. I had it mixed up in my head. Okay. Interesting. So should we should we start uh, I don't spoilers? Think I gave then? my my rating. Oh, so I, I give it. I would give it a four. Oh, here's here it is. So someone I, on the Goodreads page, someone asked, "Is this standalone?" And she was like, "Thorn is a standalone. However, I do have companion novels in a companion duology planned, but oh, they will each center on different main characters." Okay, so, so Thorn is a standalone. Yeah. Okay. okay. So spoilers. <laughs> yeah. By the way. This is the first time I ever took notes. There were so many main, there were so many characters coming Dude, out, and I was like, I, I was losing track of all the of characters. Who. So I started writing down <laughs> whose character was what because and I then was I like, think I should have. I did not do that, but yeah, and I was neither did I. Listening to the because I started like getting after. confused on who was who, and so I was like, I just started writing everything down. Not just that, but then like she was using titles for people. And and so there were some areas where I was like, wait, is that the person's title? Is that their name? Are we talking about <laughs> the same thing? Like, what's going on? Yeah. But um, I okay. cried. So did I. <laughs> I, was like, I texted. Okay, so I guess we're moving on into spoilers because this is a spoiler. The horse died. And I texted and I cried. Like, I was so surprised by it. I was crying because I was I like, wasn't surprised, but I cried. I was, no, I was taken by surprise. I texted Chloe. I was like, I literally just cried because the horse died. She was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was, like, <laughs> I was like, what? And I was on the phone with Will. And Will's like, wait, she has a horse? And I'm like, no, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wait you know why i wasn't surprised i think it was because i looked up goose girl and i looked up the name of the horse because i was like does this horse name have meaning and i saw like the wiki for the horse and it said deceased <laughs> and so i was like damn it <laughs> like this horse is gonna die and i'm not gonna be okay with it see um, i didn't so. look too far into the research i just got a general understanding <laughs> I mean, I just wanted to know if there was like something special about the horse's name. So, and I, I got the wiki. I was like, deceased? What? <laughs> I was like, well, that doesn't mean he dies in this story. <laughs> but okay, my thing about my thing about the love interest. What was what was his name again? It started with a K, right? Testrin. 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 Here's my thing with him. I don't really, yes, I get it. He's supposed to be the love interest, but I don't consider him a love interest because they, like, technically they're just betrothed. He even said at the end of the book, could you come to love me? There's no love yet. That's why I wouldn't consider it a love interest. Yeah, so <clears throat> I agree, but I kind of sort of like and dislike the way they did it. So I'm always the first one to complain when a book has too much of an insta love. Like we, they literally mm -hmm. meet one like one day and the next week they're already in love with each other. So I like that the ending kind of had that these main characters are going to get married and they're going to try to work through it and come to care about each other. That being said, I felt that they had no chemistry whatsoever. They, it was like it. it what it seemed is like they, they could probably have a very nice platonic relationship with one another, but literally there was no chemistry between the two of them. And I felt very awkward at the end when they were like, uh, you know, you know, we can come to love each other or whatever. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I wasn't crazy about the, um, the love interest, Kestrin. Another thing is that, I understand that she's a princess and it's her duty to become the queen because she technically agreed to the betrothal, but she spent this entire time not wanting to be princess. She was actually happy that the whole switch happened because <laughs> she could finally be free. And at the end, I just felt like at the end, what Castron gave, he gave her the option to go back home. And I was like, are you dumb? Like, why would she go home to her abusive family? She wants to be free. She mm -hmm. doesn't want to go home. She doesn't want to be married to you and become queen. She wants <laughs> to just be free. She wants to live her life. And I, I don't like of the fact that he that wasn't an option for her. Um, that he the only option he gave was to go back home to her abusive family. So I feel like he was very, I wouldn't say selfish, but he was very like 
deaf, tone deaf when it came mm-hmm. to her needs because she spent this whole time wanting him to leave her alone. Like she, he would literally pursue her, uh, but she wanted him to leave her alone and he didn't. And in the end, she never got what she wanted. And I feel, I honestly feel bad for her that she has to go back. And I understand that she made that choice because she actually wants to make a difference, especially in the children's lives. Um, but I just, I felt like, I felt so bad for her at the end that she didn't get what she truly wanted, which was her freedom. I, I, I kind of, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, I didn't feel that way. I felt like when she realized that he was the wind, that something clicked for her. And she kind of like, that's like another thing I had an issue realized with. realized that she had <laughs> been familiar with his presence. And, you know, when she realized that's who he was, I feel like it clicked for her. And then she was like, he, he was no longer a stranger, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, there was a familiarity I, I, there. And, and also, like, her whole entire journey, as much as she didn't want to be princess and didn't want any of the responsibility she was still taking care of people in the kingdom and she kind of grew into that position. Mm -hmm. So she grew as a person and kind of accepted her responsibility. Yeah. Like I, I agree with that. Um, she saw that she, what happened to her was actually really good because she was able to see firsthand at what's happening with the kingdom, you know, at how, you know, the, the, the guards, the people that are supposed to protect the, the city, the kingdom are, don't even care. And they're leaving, up to the thieves to you know to do the justice that the really the king should be the one who's who should be keeping order of the town of the the kingdom um i in some ways i agree but i feel like in my personal opinion i feel like she had to settle for that role at the end she had to accept you know uh, i'm in a position where i can make a really i can make changes so i'm gonna go ahead and accept the role of queen so that I can make a difference in these person's life. But it, I feel like if the responsibility wasn't so heavy on her shoulders, if she didn't feel responsible for making a, a difference in people's lives, I feel like she would have chosen her freedom. And I feel like that's what she truly wants. But again, I feel like she decided, hey, I'm in this position of power and I'm gonna go ahead and make a difference in these people's lives because if not me, who else? So, I mean, but like, interestingly, from like the beginning, she did not want the prince harmed, right? Like, she yeah. did not want anything to happen to him. She didn't want Velka to mess things up or to have mm-hmm. him hurt. And so, like, she was kind of protecting him before really even realizing he was the win and they had a connection and all this other stuff. And then, like, towards the end, like, she fought really hard for him. I felt like. There has to be some emotion there. There has to be some. I mean, yeah, I agree, but her. I also feel like a part of that it has to do with the fact that she is so compassionate. She is genuinely a genuinely good person, you know. I mean, if it was me, I wouldn't want anything to happen to the Prince either. Um, but you know, I I just feel like that also has to do with the fact that she is just a genuinely good person. And you, it's funny, you actually like the fact that the Prince was the win. I actually find it incredibly creepy that the prince was to win and it honestly <laughs> made me dislike the the love interest even more because he was the wind but that's just me i just feel like in the beginning like the wind was this I mean, person I that know, she I'm could <laughs> i just no no i just feel like i honestly felt like when i read it i was like oh i just felt like the wind was this person that she could confide in it was like a friend and it turned out to be the prince that was you know not spying but he was like listening in on her thoughts and whatever she was telling him and i don't know to me it just felt a little bit creepy just just like that but i guess i i understand your whole connection with like w- when she realized he's the prince the wind was the prince it was kind of like a connection made between the two of them but i just thought, thought it was creepy and i didn't like that whole reveal so I kind of want to know more. I have two two different things. I kind of want to know more about the Snatchers. I feel like oh, yeah. they were kind of just there, but yeah, we don't really know too much like, about them. They were just made as like a fearful thing. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I, I didn't think about it, but yeah, they were never really fully explained. 
Yeah, and I'm wondering if we're going to find out more about them in, like, another book, like, set in the same world or something. I just want to mm-hmm. know more about them. That's and true. And then the other, the other thing I was thinking about is how it has to do with the end, which I don't know if I was, like, confused by it in the sense where I, like, just couldn't understand because of the audiobook. Like, I couldn't process it. But when, when, what's her name? The, the fake princess. Valka, was Valka. Valka was was hanged? Mm-hmm. Does so did did her skin like did the princess's skin like <laughs> turn back into herself? Like I'm yes, I couldn't visualize this. So in the my way brain. the way I understood is that they didn't really switch bodies. It's more mm-hmm. like they through Their the sorceress formed. Yeah, their body, their own bodies transformed to look like each other. Yeah. So when Valka died, there it's kind of like the spell broke, right. and they each turned back to what they actually looked like. And I'm surprised. Okay. I'm like, I thought there was gonna be like this big, like, hey, the princess just turned into a different person. Like nobody, <laughs> n- nobody freaked out. I was like, I would start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if I was one of the people in the crowd, I'll start screaming. I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? But, like, literally, there was no freak out amongst the crowd. Yeah. Like, Wait, nobody so flinched. Th- this this <laughs> was YA, right? Yes. So, I think Definitely so, yeah. For a YA book, there was a lot of death. Yeah. It <laughs> felt like there was. Like, I you mean, know, because I mean, you, you, want, you want people to be punished. You want there to be justice. But, like, being hung is some serious... <laughs> And the He's assault on shit. the on the on Violet, the assault on Violet, I thought that was like holy crap. I mean, is Throne of Glass considered they, YA too, though? What? I isn't Throne that. of Glass considered YA too, though? Yeah, yeah, like the yeah, beginning okay. of it, and then people yeah, argue like, that later. Forget the rest of them. Yeah. Forget the rest of the books. Strictly that first <laughs> book. Like, yeah. there's so much death. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But I may have missed it because I was listening to the audiobook probably too fast. But um, did they explain what happened to Violet? Like who? Yeah. Because at first they thought it was the Snatchers, but mm-hmm. then they they were like, no. The so Snatchers Violet was found. Do that. So mm-hmm. Violet was found, um, and they found her body disposed of basically in like the back of some alley. She was violated, and she was very violently violated. And um, they didn't like specifically say it out loud in the book, but they gave enough hints for you to know. And um, she went to the 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 prince, remember, to try to get him to find the people who attacked Violet. And basically, the guards didn't care. The guards that he sent out. So she went to Red Hawk, who was like the Lord of the Thieves, whatever. And right. he found the two guys who violated. Violet, because the way they did is that these these guys basically because the king doesn't care and the guards don't care, the men they tend to brag, so that's how they found him, and they hung the two guys. But so, but it was just like <laughs> random two guys just happened to attack her. Like there was yeah, no, but there like throughout no the book, connection. yeah, throughout the book they like um like the other people that um our main character used to live with you know like oak ash row and the other people they always used to tell her don't go out at night by yourself yeah right or don't or if you have to go out somewhere make sure you take someone with you or try to stay in crowded areas because the it's dangerous so they were always kind of hinting at the fact that it's not safe for women so when it happened to violet it wasn't kind of it wasn't exactly like something that surprised right yeah exactly that sucks That was. I mean, we we, <laughs> we don't really follow our uh, our script, but I mean, I guess is there any like any comments on like plot pacing or world building? I mean, I I wanted to get more of the world. I wanted to understand it a little bit more. I feel like there were a lot of things that were went unanswered, like the whole snatchers thing. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I wanted, I mean, they explained the whole thing about why the royal family kept dying or disappearing, whatever. Um, but I, ju- I do feel like the world building was a little bit lacking. And um, 
and I do like the pacing. I mean, the pacing was the the reason why I read the book so fast because I feel like the the plot just kept going, going, going. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you I did it really fast. I did. Uh, one thing that I wished I had gotten more out of is why her family hated so much, hated her so much. I mean, there was a reason, but the reason was really stupid and like really what? like petty. And so I was like, I wish I had gotten more, like, I wish there was more to that background as to why they hated her, like, they hated her so much, besides the fact that. I thought it, I thought it was because she was considered, like, the honest one, like, she was too honest. Yeah. Or was that maybe. From well, what I. Not just that. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that she wasn't really, you know, because they have, like, a, a caste system, right? And so she wasn't abiding by that system and they're supposed to be like a royal family and yeah, of course they think of themselves at the top of the food chain and she just kind of freely did what she wanted and didn't really adopt that hierarchy and I mean, she was yeah more... i agree but like the not not so much the mother but like the brother i feel like the the height of his hate was too much for it to just be that, you know what I mean? Like, oh, my sister doesn't follow, you know, uh, she should be more, act more like a royal, whatever, she shouldn't be hanging mm -hmm. out with the, with the help, whatever. Um, I feel like his hate was too much for it to just be that. And well, like, he if, really hated his sister. Like he, he super was, hated her well, sister. Yeah, I, yeah, he was like super abusive. But if he was going to marry Valka and she ruined all of that, like she basically ruined both of their love I mean like you know she did what she felt was right and I think justice was served but like he he they were supposed to weren't they supposed to get married and yeah. then like she just completely humiliated Valka so then she was not but the thing is it shouldn't affect him because he's the prince he can easily find someone else to marry but you it, can't, sh like, it should be more like people. I understand why Valka would hate her so much but you know, and be like, okay, then, I don't know. I just like, I just felt like it wasn't enough of a reason to hate my sister I mean, I don't so think much. Are, like, super good reasons to hate people, but <laughs> um, I, I, I was under the impression he wanted to marry Velka. Like, uh, that was something okay. that he wanted, so that's why he was angry that his sister ruined it for us to, you know, to stand up for a servant who they would consider beneath them anyway. You know, I mean, like, yeah, I guess I all see that it. together. I mean, though, just the like from the little bits and pieces that we got from him, like in like in the book, I didn't think he's capable of wanting anything besides like a good name for himself. So I didn't think he would care about Valka that much. But yeah, I I can see that if he like he truly wanted to marry Valka, I guess. I can Was understand. this a debut? Um, uh, I think I don't so. I'm not sure. She has she has a whole other series that she released on her own, but I don't know if this one came first or if the uh, if the others came first. I mean, I it can just, have, I mean let's see. That that kickoff point of the story just felt a little heavy-handed. The what? Like the kickoff point, just the beginning of the story, the setup felt a little heavy handed, you know, like you said, their reasoning for hating her that much was kind of petty. I think it was just a little overdone with how yep. abusive and how hateful they were, um, even though there was a reason. So, I mean, I do agree with that, but that was just, you know, the writing, I guess. So the original publication of this book came out in 2012. Um, and yeah, it looks like this was the first one. Yeah, but so I mean, I can. I mean, this can't went through so many more drafts. I bet after being picked up by Harper. Um. Any other comments on um. said world building? <laughs> <laughs> the world. I, you know, I wish. I kind of wish there was more to the lady. Yeah, I know they explain that too, but I don't know. Maybe that's just that whole ancestral um, trauma is maybe just like a tired trope for me. I think because I feel like oftentimes in like f fantasies 
or in these fairy tale settings, <clears throat> the villain has some ancestral trauma that they're still, you know, trying to get vengeance for. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I don't know what what better explanation there would have been, but either just having more, or maybe having it be a little bit different, or. Yeah, know. like the whole thing with the lady, I honestly thought she was one of the most interesting characters. Um, and then the ending happened, and I was just like, they really did her dirty. <laughs> uh, first off, yes, the whole thing with the, the ancestral thing. Okay, so she, her whole thing about killing off the royal line was to, because, you know, they they killed her mother, right? Yeah, um, they pinned her mother to the tree and they killed her. Um, but and then she went on this revenge thing. Um, and then in order for her to forgive the prince, she had to play, like the princess had to play three different rounds of this, like a test. And they only went through two rounds and the two rounds were really, really just boring. That part confused me. Yeah, what That's was it that happened for the third? I mean, like, it didn't happen. But what happened after round two that they decided to ditch round three or the uh, third test? I, I don't remember. I remember something that uh, during the third round, it, um, the princess was going to, like, in some way, it was going to put her life at risk. And so the lady was like, I don't want to risk your life in order to kill him you know what i mean in order to get him mm -hmm. to lose it was something to do with the fact that she was impressed by the princess and she didn't want to kill the kill the princess and so she decided to forgive the prince and not have to do the third test and i was just like that whole ending was just really really like not what i was expecting like you do this whole book building up the lady for this big confrontation you know i'm gonna have to save the prince from the lady and this happens like you do two little tests on the prince and you know in the end he's a good guy he decides not to kill <clears throat> had a petty revenge whatever and then be like oh i don't want to kill you so i'll forgive him i'm just like <clears throat> i was expecting more i just felt like the ending just and that's the reason honestly i decided not to rate this book five stars and went down to four <laughs> um I'm glad that Valka didn't get a horrible death, uh, but I like I like kind of how it was assigned to her, how they were like, oh, so you think this should happen and she should be in a barrel full of nails and blah, blah, blah. And Valka was like, yes, I think that's how she should die. And then they were like, okay, that's your fate. And she was like, no, wait a minute. Um, so I like that twist there. Like, I felt like she deserved that, but not necessarily the death. <laughs> yeah, I... I agree, but one of the things that, that threw me off was the fact that of the king was so accepting. I mean, there were obvious clues all around that, you know, they, the prince wasn't really the princess and, you know, uh, the goose girl wasn't really the goose girl. There was something, it was obvious. But uh, the fact that they were so accepting and the fact that, hey, this is not the prince, they kind of switched faces, whatever. I, I just felt like it was, <laughs> they didn't really question it as much as I thought they would. I'm like, like really, like you're just accepting this that this is hap that this happens, and I'm just like, okay. Um, I was gonna I say. I guess something that was because they already believed in magic. Like, well, yeah, I guess. <clears throat> but I mean, I, the Goose Girl's reputation was just that strong. <laughs> you know that she was just. I mean, he even says it when he comes for her. Didn't her mom tell her they were like, "Oh, they want you because you're honest." Yeah, and you're honest and loyal, and um, so even when she was lying, she was still being honest. <laughs> it's funny that uh, in the beginning, um, before you said about how it's it's very violent. This book um, during Valka's execution, <laughs> the author didn't go. You know, she she went all out. She was like, they kicked off the bench. She <laughs> fell to her death, and her <laughs> neck broke. Oh my and I was god! Like, Damn. <laughs> Yeah, okay. You didn't. You pulled out all the stops on this. Okay. <laughs> like bench went out. She fell and her neck broke. And I was like, "Dang, okay." I did. I don't know. Valka was not. <clears throat> she was not good. Good peoples. 
Yeah. Um, did they say how she got pulled in and manipulated into the whole ladies bullshit? Um, I don't remember. All I remember was the scene at the river uh, when they went to like bathe or whatever. Um, and Valka, I remember Valka gave um, the princess a cup in the, in the, so that they can drink from the stream. And I'm assuming the cup was drugged because as soon as she drank the water from the cup, she started feeling like really right. yeah. drugged. And that's when the sorceress appeared and they switched lives, like, or I mean, switched bodies or whatever. <clears throat> but I don't remember how Valka got involved with the lady. I'm assuming the lady probably promised her, you know, you're going to be the princess now, you're going to leave this great life as opposed to what you were promised before by your dad. I don't really have any more any more thoughts all, all together <laughs> unless anybody else has something. Um no. I mean, we can talk about the short story. Like, I know Desiree didn't read it, read it, but <clears throat> so I read the short story and I was like, I thought it was like, I didn't think it was a short story. I thought it was more like, like two years later or something, kind of like a continuation. And then I read it and I was like, what does this have to do with the story? <laughs> like the main story. And I was like, I'm so good. The only thing that made sense is that the Fae in the short story, uh, Stone Main, whatever his name was, he appeared at the very end of and the main, the, in the main okay. story. Um, he did? Oh, God. why can't I remember that? <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> It's because you listen gotta... to the audio book while doing a bunch of other different things. I don't like kudos to you because I cannot do that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, now I'm going back into the book to. to yeah, see. he appeared like when the princess goes into like the throne and the king is talking to these other people and he introduces them to her. There's two people there and one of them is the Fae, which is Stone Main, who appears in the short story. Um, and then Chloe said that she said about how it's a companion sequel so i was thinking maybe the short story was the lead off yeah yeah that's um i i didn't decide to read it until after i found out like <laughs> oh okay the next the another book she's writing is gonna have you know this main character and i was like okay well now i have to read it yeah so but i feel i feel like the short story might be like a setup for the companion sequel that's coming so <clears throat> Ooh, Libby has a search feature. I can just search for the name. So it only, like, that's the only similarity between the story. It's set in, in that world, but, like, just he's the only character. That, that I noticed. Have. That I noticed, yeah. So, uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, there's a family that he interacts with. Um, in, But none of the family members, like, none of them were familiar from the main story. They might have been mentioned, but... Um, one of the daughters, she has a limp, a lame leg, so she limps, and I don't remember anybody that limped in the main story. And she's kind of like the other main character of the short story besides the Fae, so. Hmm. Okay, I, I used the search feature and found the spot, so yeah, I remember that part. But yeah, with the short story, I... I totally got what you meant where you were like, there was like confusion because I didn't really know what to expect going into it. But I, so I guess it's just, it's set in the same world. The main character is going to be the main character in the next book. And that, that's it. That's so it was right. like an introduction. What did you rate this book? Oh, I rated it at four stars. Okay. <laughs> Shall we share our final thoughts, or is there anything in particular you want to read? Uh, you want to go over? I don't have anything else. Um, okay, <clears throat> here's my thing. 
<laughs> I want to ask you guys what you thought about this because I, I didn't know what the point of it was. So when Falada dies, the white horse, when he dies, he asks her to mount my head on the on the city gates. And she goes there like twice. And on the sec uh, and every time she goes, she hears her name. And he's like saying princess. And then on the last time she goes there, he actually like looks like he's alive. He like moves his head to the point where the guard that was following her notices as well and i'm like what was the point of this whole like put my mount my head on the city gates like <laughs> is it just to scare off the guard at, at, at a later scene like i don't get the whole point of mount my head at the city gates like uh, i think that was I like one of the things that helped solidify the idea that she was actually the princess because they mentioned it at some point they were like yeah. oh the guards heard the horse head talking to you we we know you're the princess so it was like they they had an idea and they felt like it was her but they weren't sure i mean like when when initially when falado was like like right before he was gonna die he's like put my head on the on the city gates i thought it was maybe that he as a a magical being that he doesn't die like right. in a creepy sort of way mm -hmm. his head is gonna be there, <laughs> be there and then and whenever she comes yeah whenever she comes by he can talk to her like they used to before which i thought was super creepy but whatever uh so i thought that was the whole point and then when she started like the first couple times that she went to visit it she he would she would hear his her name like in his voice but then after the the guard caught her with the moving head whatever it was never really like like that part it was never really revisited and i was just so confused as what was the point of the whole mounting the head on the city gates besides being a creepy thing to do i think it was also <clears throat> to point the finger at at valka to like put his death on display because everyone knew that the goose girl had a bond with the horse and was always seen with the mm -hmm. horse and was always walking around with the horse so like putting his head on the gate now everybody knows that that was intentional that was like his death was totally intentional it's on display and i think that helped them realize also just yeah. that valka did it and that she's not a nice person <laughs> <laughs> One other thing um, you mentioned earlier, Desiree, on your um, your spoiler-free thoughts that you thought the the main character was just kind of one-dimensional, where she was a good person and everybody knows she's a good person, and I kind of agree. And I feel like not just about her, and I feel like a lot of the characters on this book was very one-dimensional. Like Valka was the mean girl, and she right. never, she kind of never got off that plateau of mean girl. She, there was no dimension to her character. Same thing in the main character. She was just a nice girl. She got along with the children, you know, kind of like a Cinderella <laughs> with the animals. You know, she, right. yeah. she was just very likable. Everybody liked her. She, you know, bad so things happen to her because yeah. other people are bad people, not necessarily because it's her fault. And so <laughs> I feel like she was, again, a very one-dimensional character and... I, again, I also feel like the same for the love interest. He's very one-dimensional. There's not too much interesting features about him. I feel like even, honestly, even the bad guy, Lady, she was very one-dimensional. Like, her own thing was revenge. And, like, the one thing that she did that's out of character was randomly forgive the prince because <laughs> she didn't want to kill off the princess. And, again, that has to go back to the princess that she's so nice that everybody loves her because of her one-dimensional characterization. Um, I feel like the prince showed just a little bit more dimension because there are times where she's, like, kind of afraid of him and not sure if he's going to be aggressive and violent like her brother. And so, like, you almost see, like, maybe he could have that that very vengeful king streak in him or something like that mm -hmm. so i felt like in my mind there was more question as to whether he was going to pass all three tests versus you know thinking whether or not um alira was, was that her name yeah mm -hmm. whether or not she was gonna mess up and make the wrong decision <clears throat> or whatever like i knew she was forever gonna do the right thing and help people and yeah 
So that kind of aspect was a little bit boring. But for him, I, I, there were moments where I questioned it, where I was like, oh, is he going to strike her? Is he going to yell at her? Is he going to, you know? So I feel like he had a little bit more dimension yeah, than some I of agree. the other characters. Yeah, I agree. It's, um, but I feel like my the majority of my enjoyment from this book stems from the plot line. And I think that's sad because sometimes I, I, I do feel like characters really can make make or break a book. And uh, while the characters weren't necessarily bad in this character, they, they didn't have that like character growth, that character development that we all love. And it was like, it was written in first perspective, I think, right? From... Uh, I think so, I don't remember. Yeah, because usually when it's written in first perspective and you get to be inside the character's head, I think like that helps establish a connection with the characters. Uh, I found that to be the case more often than not. But, you know, if it's still relying more on the plot than the characters, then... Yeah. <clears throat> but, I, but I am sad that the next book is not going to continue their story i don't know what else there is to say about them after they get married or whatever but it would have been nice to see how they deal with uh you know the issues in the kingdom i guess yeah but Similar i feel like to this because, i feel like because she's so cinderella like and the fact that everybody <laughs> loves her um except for the evil stepmother and step siblings um do you, I I just feel like this this whole story could have been wrapped up nicely and they lived happily ever after at the end. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it was still a four. I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do we want to talk about next month? Yeah. So I have the cover on my phone, actually. Let me pull that up. So next month, we are going to be reading Alongside the Betrothed by Kira Cass. Uh, Kira's like first book in like four years. And I'm so excited to talk about it and read it again. Um, and our live show is, I think it's May 31st. I think that's a Sunday. Let me check again. Yeah, our live show is tentatively scheduled for May 31st at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this channel. And the book comes out on May 5th, so make sure you find a copy, buy a copy, get it from your library any way that you can during um, during these times. <laughs> and I'm so excited. <laughs> the new Sarah Cast book, and I'm so excited. Um. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be reading in May, and I'm really pumped, and I hope you guys are as well, and that's all we have for this live show. So we will see you guys back here uh, on May 31st at 6 p.m. Bye, guys. Bye.